Christmas uh, break here. So we'll practice in the morning uh, for about an hour and a half. We'll lift weights, we'll lift really strong uh, to get uh, make sure we get you ready for the Big Ten season. We'll let the guys go for a few days, but really pleased with the effort that we had tonight. Uh, they knew very well uh, Alabama A&M was 0-11 coming in. Uh, I think they're better than they played tonight, uh, but I think our defense continues to grow as we uh, put a little bit more pressure on the ball, create turnovers. I think the kids understand the byproduct is a fast break, and they love the fast break. Hated the turnovers in the first half, hated it, because we, we really, there's some things we've been working on that uh, we did not do. Uh, at the same time, uh, we made enough shots and uh, we, uh, we executed just enough. And, and the second half this was a very similar thing. Very rarely do you have up 27 and a half, and then you, do, you basically duplicate the second half. So really pleased with uh, how we played. Mike? Coach, uh, Charles had another 30-point game today. Um, I think what, it was his first. Yeah, first. I, I'm at another good game, sorry. Another good game. Um, what, what, uh, what can you say about his performance recently? Well, he's, he's getting, gaining more and more confidence. Uh, even, even after he started out with some uh, questionable foul shooting and ended up five for eight, that's sort of an improvement right now. Um, but he is, he's starting to understand how this all works and choosing his spots more carefully. So I th thought he took 15 good shots. You know, when you take 15 good shots, that's, that's a lot of shots, number one, but he took 15 good shots, and as he continues to work, he, he can do a lot of things. I, I love the way he saw the open man several times. He's still learn, learning that, though. Often in the second half, I think seem like one of the go-to guys. Is, what role do you see him fitting into as he grows? He, he's, he's growing every day, and it's, but it's small steps. It's really small stuff. He, I wouldn't expect him to be a go-to guy yet, but I, one day he's going to be a fabulous Michigan player. But every day he's, he's learning more about what, how he can use this great God-given body correctly because uh, he still does some, some turns and some, some things that, uh, and some, he's got some habits that are not conducive to using this body, and now we've we got to get that out of him. But I just love his energy, and his, he's, he wants to be coached, and that's really important. You said it was only a matter of time before Duncan had one of those five or six yeah. games. Good How many did he make? Four? four? Five to five. seven. Five to seven, yeah. yeah. So I think it was three for four the other day. So it's just, it's he's going to come back to the norm. You know he is. I, I thought he had better arc on the ball today, and he really took shots with his feet set a little bit. So, but I really like, you know, we're, we, 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 the, our defense today, people were trying to attack him again. He didn't get in foul trouble. He made people score over him. And he's got to continue to work on it. I mean, he's doing lane shuffles every day. He's just got to continue to, to just work at staying in front of people when we do switch and we put him on a smaller guard. And then obviously he didn't need Eli's points tonight. Would you like to see him be a little more aggressive up there? Yeah, yeah. I, he just was trying to set other people up. Did he end up with five assists? He had four at halftime. We had four assists and no turnover. So if he just continued to do that, I mean, it's good. And, and um, he, he, like I said, the, the kids like playing with him. Uh, he's not going to be a stat, uh, a stat sheet stuffer right now, but he is learning to play better defense, and he does understand what we're doing. And he's sort of like a, a form of Dun when Duncan. He, there, there's certainly some things Duncan's working at, but Duncan allows us to flow. He allows us to flow, and so Eli allows us to flow. And uh, so I, I love, I love what he's given us right now. It's just enough, and I think it'll be better as the year goes on. Over here on the left. Coach, you talked about habits a few minutes ago. When a game like this, bad habits can develop. And the players talk about the challenge of maintaining that discipline and playing the team game in a game like this. How hard is that for a team? To well, I, I think we saw it the other day where I think we were up so much against Detroit in the second half, we played them even, right? It was an even score. So, I, But it's very, it's so natural and it's, it's going to happen all the time. And you can't. You know, they're not bad kids or they're not forming bad habits. It's, it's, it's a way of life. You know, you get you get up and, and they, you know you're going to win the game. It's hard. But I, I didn't think we did that today. I thought we we did some of the right things. But we got some guys that will go left every time in their right hand. We got some guys that continue to reach in when they shouldn't reach in. We'll be working. Tomorrow's practice for an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes. We'll be full go, right? We'll send them home after that. But we got to work on these bad habits that you're talking about. Andrew? Back to Isaiah, uh, he had another high-low pass. I think he had one Saturday yep. too. Like, do you do you like his feel for the game? Is yep. it more like technique and footwork I, I do. that it's? Well, I I, uh, I don't want to give the scouting report on him, but but he does 
really feel the game in some areas, and there's some other areas that he's just got to continue to work at what, what the defense is giving him. Because he'll go back to bad habits, but just it's just a matter of footwork. It really is. It's, it's you know his balance and how he pivots and which way he turns and and he's so much. D.J. Wilson had a lot of similar bad habits, right? Playing through physical contact and things like that. And once he once he did that, the whole world opened up for him. And I I, I don't want to compare players, but D.J. had a similar habit that was just holding him back. And uh, once he got through it, it was a big difference. Right in front of Jeff. Duncan and Muhammad both shot well from the outside tonight. It's part of that approach. How about the one play where Dun Muhammad just made two? Yeah. And then he was open again. Duncan said, no, I want it, and they gave it back. Yeah. That makes your heart warm. When it's, you see that type of two seniors doing that, that's yeah. pretty cool. Is part of that um, a product of how Charles was getting to the hoop and just kind of I know. I think that those two guys are just really good. Have become Muhammad has become a, sh a really good shooter. Uh, Duncan has always been, and but Duncan just you know need need to see the ball go in a few times, and he did at Detroit, and now he is again. So um, he's a great weapon for us. Pardon my ignorance because I'm not one of the beat writers, but when do you expect Mo back? Um, we, we, I, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but I don't think it, I'm not concerned about it. But he's. Uh, He's gonna he's gonna go through a full treatment. He had a huge weightlifting session today from seven to nine. He was up there with John Sanderson lifting weights, going through, just really blowing his body out. Um, he's gonna uh, get on. He's gonna go back to Germany uh, for just three days, but he's gonna go back. But we got he got he, he understands why he has to rest, but at the same time he has to get his cardio up. Uh, we're hopeful as soon as the pain is gone, we'll know, and the pain is diminishing every day. Nick. John, over the last, I would say, like four or five games, since the second half maybe that UCLA game, Charles, have you seen him sort of start to, you know, incline a little yeah. bit here and, and how he feels in the offense? Yeah, I think he's starting to understand how it all fits together. And then he'll go do a couple times where like he went in. He's got one, I'm going to drive down the lane, I'm going to jump in the air and throw it in the stands. He's got like one of those every game. But you still look at his assist turnover ratio when he slows down and sees it. I can't tell you how receptive he is to coaching. And it's just, yes, sir, no, sir, eyes right on you. And he is, uh, whether it's Luke, Luke coaches him a lot, I coach him, and he's just getting better, and he, he recognizes his mistakes. Uh, but the three-point shot, I think, was what we were all waiting. I saw it last year, but when the lights are on, what was it going to be like? And I think he, he said probably what is a norm that he can be at uh, most most of the time, so um, as far as percentage. And, and then he's got that, that jump shot. Uh, in, in traffic, it just jumps over everybody. It's, it's virtually very hard to stop. If he's got one where he throws out of bounds now, did he have like two or three a month ago? Like, uh, last year, let, oh, let's just go back last year. It was we we kept track of every assist turnover last year in every practice, and I would yell out turnover Matthews every time he did it, right. and there was many more than assists. Now I think he's got a two to one ratio, which is really high for a, 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 a small forward. It's a good number because he just isn't in that many assist situations. But no, and I just got to just, you know, zip her up when he makes one of those plays and pretty soon he'll stop jumping in the air. You know, but X did it today too. You can't jump in the air and then decide who's open. You keep your feet on the ground, pivot, or play, play, uh, make bets with your feet on the ground. Coach, I think that's going to do it. All right. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year, Hanukkah, holidays, everything. All right. Okay.